Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Uh, welcome, welcome. Are you excited for another day? I see you guys are already in the chats. Um, Blake is here, Zoe's here, Camilla uh, and Mateo are here early. Blaine is here. Um, I'm glad I, I'm kind of sad, Blaine, that I don't get to call you Galaxy Master 5987, but um, I'm glad you're here. Kylie's here. Good morning, Kylie. Um, who else is here? Let's see. All right. Um, I'm excited to start with you guys. Uh, we're going to learn some cool stuff. We're going to do textures, some more textures that we didn't get to the first time we did it. Um, if you didn't take that first class, you can always check back in the in the YouTube videos and watch it. Um, so, I'm ex uh, so I'm excited to kind of take that to the next level. Then we're also going to do some illusions today and check out some MC Escher. Um, but yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so for our morning plan for today, we're going to look over our quote of the day. Then we're going to do our art review. Then we're going to draw some textures and take a karate break after that. Um, now, right now, I'm still uh, figuring out the setup here, so uh, I probably won't be able to do the karate. You guys are more than welcome to. I'll have a list of everything we've learned, um, and we can do some stretches with you just to keep us loose. Um, we're also going to do some illusions, and then we're going to do our challenge of the day to send you off. We're going to do our morning mail, and then I'm going to uh, close up the show. Cool. All right. So. If there's any questions or if you want to know what we're up to, you could just follow like the moving sun at the top of the screen and that'll um, that'll show you where we're at. Um, so that'll keep it nice and simple. All right, so our quote of the day comes from, if you guys recognize this man, Vincent Van Gogh. Oh, I can still call you that? Okay, cool. Um, I'm glad I can still call you that, Galaxy Master 5987. Um, cool, all right. So our quote of the day, oops, there we go, is from um, Vincent Van Gogh, and this is him right here. This is a painting he did of himself, so it's a self-portrait, and this is also another painting that he did, and Vincent said, It is good to love many things, for therein lies the true strength, and whosoever loves much performs much, and can accomplish much, and what is done in love is well done. All right, so one more time, I'm going to read that just in case we didn't get it, get all the, the goodness out of it the first time. He said, it is good to love many things, for therein lies the true strength. And whosoever loves much, performs much, and can accomplish much. And what is done in love is well done. Um, so I just like that quote because I think it's important to appreciate and remember all the things that we love. Um, and, and, uh, and, and I think, especially when you're creating art, um, there's like a misconception that you have to be like very depressed and do Picasso's blue period every time. Uh, but that's not true. You can, you can do art by sharing the things that you love to draw, um, and share that with other people and then you can, uh, give them as gifts and stuff. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use art. Um, and, uh, oh, I know, um, I'm looking at the comments now. Um, good afternoon from New Jersey. Hi, Christine. Um, and hi, dog, uh, pet dog, Max. Um, and yeah, Kylie, he's my favorite too. Um, I love how thick he um, lays on his paint. Did you know, fun fact, that Vincent Van Gogh actually um, put on his painting so thick with the paint, like he would um, squeeze it sometimes right out of the tube onto the canvas. So thick, in fact, that some of his paintings still haven't even completely dried yet um, that are still around that we have in museums today and they're still wet underneath all the layers of paint that he added. All right, now I want us to take a minute to breathe. We're gonna think about all the things that you love um, and try to do what Vince Van Gogh said to do. All right, so I want everybody to close their eyes and I'm gonna Read this part right here just to give us like a little narration while we take deep breaths. So take a deep breath in. Breathe out. And we're going to continue that as I like read this like little part right here. So breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Okay. So as you take a moment to breathe, breathe in. And think about all the things that you love. 
And they might be the things that you see, the things that you smell, the flavors you taste, or notes that you hear. And I want you to take a moment to let all those things fill you up with a nice deep breath in, breathe out, with the strength, like Vincent said, because just for right now, we're going to draw, and we want to be full of strength and full of the love that we have for all these different things that we can draw. All right, you guys can open your eyes. Um, very cool. All right, now, our art review. This is, I know, everybody's uh, one of everybody's favorite segments. Um, you guys crushed it. It looks awesome. Um, we have, let's see, we have Khan and Ellis. Um, really cool. Um, you guys did everything, which is amazing. Um, I love it. Um, you guys did Totoro. You guys did the panda. You guys did the unicorn. Um, everybody. And then, um, and I even like LSG added a couple extra characters to yours too. Um, very cool. All right, and Sienna. Uh, Sienna went above and beyond and did a whole painting based off of like the breakdown of shapes that we did last week uh, or last episode for our cartoon characters episode so if you haven't watched that one yet you can go and watch it um, and uh, it'll be episode 7 cartoon characters and um, she what she did was she broke down the shapes of I think that's a snow leopard maybe um, or an ocelot or something um, I'm not, I'm not very good at animals. You did it great, Sienna. Um, I'm just, I just don't know my um, wild cats as well as you do, probably. Um, all right. And, uh, but yeah, no, it looks great though. And I love the background. So very nice job, everybody that contributed to that. Um, also, we have some other ones. Ariella, here is her perspective one from a couple episodes back. We did two point perspective. Um, Candace and Kylie, uh, you guys did a really good job. Round of applause. I love all your characters. Um, I especially love the expression on Totoro's face. It's hilarious. Um, very nice. And Isabella, you guys, I like what you did with yours. Did you draw that on a tablet? It looks like very clean lines. And I like how you were able to color in Totoro. Um, and you even added the sloth in too, which, which is great because you added, you took... Um, you did a challenge where I challenged you guys to take an animal and break it down to basic shapes. All right. Let me see if I'm missing anything in the comments. Um, looks like an ocelot. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what we're going with. All right. Cool. Now, uh, if you guys want to um, participate in the art review and have your work shown on the screen for next episode, just send me an email and uh, send me your work to, in that email to noahfontana at gmail.com. And we're going to do another episode tomorrow. So send it in quick um, after we finish today's class. And then you guys can uh, see your artwork shown up on the big screen. And everybody can, you can get that shout out, which will be cool. Um, okay, now... Let's draw some textures. So I'm going to switch over to my iPad. And here we go. I'm For the textures that we're going to draw today, I picked metal, water, stone, and fire. We're going to try to get through all of them today. OK. So I have my new layer. I have my sphere on a different layer, just so that um, uh, I can use, reuse the sphere for the different elements. And we're going to start with metal. Now. For metal, uh, it's very similar to what we were already doing when we were shading in the sphere. So we're going to start like this. Here we go. We're going to start by choosing a light source. There we go. All right. Now, the difference between like a sphere and I'm going to switch brushes actually. Um, the difference between a metal ball versus just like a matted ball is that the highlights and the shadows are going to have much sharper edges um, because with the sphere that's metal it's going to reflect a lot more and it's going to um, capture all the little details in the reflections as opposed to like a matted one like here let's start with that first So the matter what, everything's going to look kind of foggy and hazy. Let 
like that. Now, that looks fine. That almost looks kind of metallic-y. But since we have the edges looking so rough and like loose, um, it's not gonna, it doesn't look as metal. All right. Um, how are you guys doing in the comments? Um, uh, Galaxy Master, why are you sad? Uh, do you, um, aren't you excited to draw some metal? <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, we're gonna continue drawing. So we're gonna do what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this sphere into um, into a more metallic -y sphere. Right, we're gonna add some more defining lines. I'm gonna erase out of here. I'm gonna erase the highlights a little bit more, and we could even draw an outline around the highlights like this. As you can see, it already kind of looks a little bit more metallic-y just by giving those outlines. So we're just going to outline everything. We're going to make every everything a little bit more defined. So we're going to draw an outline around that dark shadow. We're still going to leave the reflected light, um, which would be like that, the reflected light. It's bouncing back. Now we could even go so far as to give like a kind of a wavy line um, for the shadow, like that. I think that looks a little too dark. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. And what I'm doing right now is I'm using the eraser tool to erase some of the light, the shadow light. There we go. That's a little better. All right, now it's looking a little bit more metallic -y. We can add in a little bit more gradient here if we want. Let me give it a shadow at the bottom. And what's cool is that if you have it in contrast, like so if you have the shadow on the bottom and then that's very rough, and then you have the actual highlights on the sphere as very clear and defined, that'll actually change it so that it looks, so it gives it more of a contrast so that the ball even looks more metallic-y. We can even add a few more signs on the side if we want. to. Just by erasing into it. Oh, okay. Well, um, hopefully you still have your other senses. Um, I'm sorry you don't have any sense of smell. Um, that's gonna. That's 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 a bummer. Um, I'm sorry. And unfortunately, with art, we don't need to smell, so we can still draw a lot. Um, chew. Okay. Hi, Mateo. Okay. Um, okay. So. If you guys finish your spheres, we're going to erase this layer. We're going to start a new layer. We're going to make this into a water droplet. Okay, now with water, it's also very similar um, to what we've been doing, but it's a few things are a little bit different. This one is going to be a lot more, um, with metal, we had a lot of more like guidelines where everything was like evenly, um, like kind of cropped out and we had a clear outlines. With water, we're going to have a mixture of 
faded shades, and then we're going to just cut in with like the, the clear shines with um, with our eraser afterwards. So let's see. Again, we'll have our light. We're going to start with the same kind of shading that we've done before. But we're going to shade all the way into it. Try to get a more gradient shade. There we go, like that. Across the whole circle. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, good, you do have your other senses. All right, now, once we have our whole circle shaded in like this, and a little more, there we go, okay, cool. All right, now we could go in and do a little bit of the highlights with our eraser right here. Now you could have just left these parts blank and not have shaded them, but it's a little bit easier if you go in with the eraser, especially when we go into this part right here. So right here, I want to do the highlights on the bottom. And now the difference between this and the metal as well is that these lines are going to be a little bit more like kind of fluid and squiggly because um, it's made out of water. So they're always going to look like, we always want them to look like kind of like jello. Okay, how's everybody's looking? Um, okay, and now when we do the shadow for this water droplet, um, watch, we can do the regular shadow. But what's cool that makes it look more a little, a little bit more like water is by giving the shadow itself its own highlight because even though the sphere, the water droplet is blocking uh, the light from hitting the ground right there, the light is also still going through that sphere. So we can actually do a little highlight in the in the shadow like this. And that gives this cool illusion that um, the light is going passing through the sphere, which is what would happen with water. And this goes back to what we were talking about with uh, Van Gogh, where he said it's good to love many things. Um, so at a young age, um, um, I've, I had a love for science um, and I always loved doing all these science experiments and uh, that was thanks to my mom. She was a good science teacher, um, just to put it lightly. Um, and, uh, and she had us do all these different cool science experiments um, growing up. And so I loved how the different things in science happen, how there's different uh, elements reacted to things. And I loved learning about water and molecules and all that stuff. And so it's really interesting to draw these things now because now I, because I had the fascination fascination of all these elements, um, my fascination was able to be translated into my art. And so now when I'm drawing water droplets or metal, um, I can use all my fascination with all those things and put it into my drawing. Um, a fun story about that too is that Stan Lee, actually, the guy who wrote who created Marvel Comics and wrote about Spider-Man and Captain America and the Hulk um, and like the X-Men. Um, he 
he had the idea for all those different things based off of his love for science too. So if you ever seen those like stories where they see like a two headed snake gets born or like a frog with an, like, an extra leg or something like that, um, he, he recalls reading about those in the newspapers and uh, that gave him the idea that like maybe instead of a frog with an extra leg, it was a man born with wings or maybe it was um, somebody that had really big feet and he can grab onto stuff and then he created characters like Beast and Angel in the Marvel comics, which is really cool. And the same thing with Spider-Man too. Um, he had a love for animals. So if you look at Spider-Man's uh, villains, Spider-Man is a spider, right? But all of his, most of his villains are um, animals as well. You've had the rhino, you have Dr. Octopus, you have the vulture, um, you have the scorpion even. Uh, all stuff that is are actual real animals. And uh, you could tell that they're all really based in science. So mutants are, that's something that happens in real life. Um, the animals fighting each other, that's happened, that stuff that you see happen in real life. So Stan Lee was definitely on the same page as Vincent Van Gogh. And he had a fascination for a lot of things and he loved a lot of things. And so try to think of all the things that you love and then we can try to draw those too. Um, let me know also in the comments. Uh, if you can put the comments not in the live chat comment, but if you can put them in the actual YouTube video comment, that'll be easier for me to make sure I don't miss any of them. So put in the YouTube video comments, things that you'd like to draw. And if you see something that somebody else commented already, and you want to draw that, gives it, give that comment a thumbs up. And the ones with the most thumbs up, I'll make sure we do them first. Okay. Now, back to our drawing. Now we're going to... Now we're just going to try to paint stone. Okay. So, again, we're going to start our light source. Let's change the light source um, to this side. Just to change it up. There we go. I don't like those light shines. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. Now, with our stone, we're going to start not with the actual shading, but we're going to try to do in some outlines first. So we're going to try to do some squiggly outlines like this. Now, I want you guys to try to change your line width like, and your line quality. So that means some parts of your line are going to be thick, some parts are going to be thin. And we're just going to kind of connect the dots and do little zigzags. Now I've done, I've drawn stone and rocks a lot before, so um, I kind of have a better eye probably to see what looks right and what doesn't. Um, so it does take a little getting used to to see how you want to like break up the stone. There we go. Okay. Cool. Okay, now it's looking a little bit more stony. Um, okay, a bit. Oh, very interesting. I didn't read that part. Um, uh, that Spider-Man was created when he's when Stan Lee saw a bug climb up a wall, um, which is a really cool superpower to have, but. Imagine like before that Spider-Man was a thing, we might not have even thought of that. It's more like a mythical beast kind of thing. Um, but um, what's interesting about the Green Goblin, right, is that he, that's almost like a mental health um, uh, villain, um, which is a lot of also what uh, DC Comics do. They deal with a lot of like the psychology of how our brains work. Um, so if you look at their villains, they're all almost like different psychological disorders that you can have. Um, and with the Green Goblin, it's interesting because the dad passes it down to the son, which um, can be something that happens a lot. So um, not to get too far into the psychology of the, of the comics. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's all definitely based on like real things that happen. Um, and they just kind of extrapolate on them and make them um, even more... Uh, I guess heroic is the bad word. This is the wrong word for that, but yeah. All right. Uh, so now what we're going to do is now we're going to cut into these lines that we already drew. We're going to make them a little bit darker in some areas. We're just going to try to think of it as if 
um, we're looking at it as uh, a round. And so we want to see the edges of these pieces as if they're broken up. Like there's little valleys and like crevices inside these rocks. Like this. So we're going to almost pretend that these are like raised out of this cube. And if you look, my brush is really, uh, my pencil is really thick. Um, that's because I'm using the side of it. So if you draw with the side, instead of drawing like this on top, and you hold it to the side and you sketch it like that, you'll get a thicker line. It's a little bit more rough, which is good because that's what we want for these rocks. Okay, now we can start to shade. We're gonna we're gonna shade over them. Um, we're gonna leave instead of having a shade a shadow go over across the entire sphere. That's gonna be the general idea, but we're still gonna leave some highlights. So we can shade over the entire sphere like this, and making it gradually get lighter as we get to closer to the light. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, we're going to go in and erase. And we're going to erase along the edges that would be hitting along the light. We can leave these highlights very like loose um, and very like rough. Because this is a rock after all, so it's not going to look as shiny. And if I'm going too fast, um, you can always pause and um, let yourself catch up. I'm just trying to go fast so that you guys don't have to wait for me. There we go. There we go. Now, if you want just to add a couple little textures like we did with the, with the, um, the ball of water, um, you can even have the rocks coming out a little bit of your sphere like this. And that'll give it a little bit more effect too. And if you want, you can even have rocks falling from it. There we go. All right, and now you just drew some stone. Um, our last one that we're gonna try um, is gonna be fire. All right, now for fire, um, this one, um, we're gonna do three different layers of color. We're gonna do like a red, and an orange and a yellow. Now, if you have those, that'd be great. If you don't, we can you can do them with just a pencil, and you just have like a darker uh, shades of gray. Um, oh no, all good, Sienna. Um, Spider Man does water, whatever a spider can do. Oh no, I have the song. <laughs> no, now you got the song stuck in my head, like a uh, Spider Man song. All right, let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. Um, um, you guys usually get quiet when we get into the drawing, uh, which is good. Uh, you guys are focusing. Um, and uh, all right, let's do some fire. Okay. So let's see. For fire, 
we're going to start out with just like a pencil sketch. Um, and we're going to, so here we go. Now fire is where the light is going to come from, so we're not even going to do a light source. We're going to have our, um, this will be orange, this will be white, uh, I mean yellow. I'm going to do it with color. If you guys don't have color, you can still do it with pencil. Um, I'm just going to do it with color that way when I talk about it, you guys can know what I'm talking about. So, depending on what colors you're using, um, it might be better to just start with the yellow, just because it's lighter. So we can start by coloring in the center with yellow. We'll leave the center of it white, just so that it looks even brighter. And we're going to do our sketch in yellow. Now, if you're just using a pencil, like a regular pencil, not a color pencil or a crayon or anything like that, um, you could just draw very lightly. Okay. So we're going to have... We're going to do a swirling motion and we're going to do a couple like tests so just to get the looseness of it. We're going to alternate between, here now I think I'm going to need to make this all smaller. There we go. Inside that one. Okay, cool. Now we have plenty of room. Cool. Now, if you watch, what I'm doing is I'm just creating a bunch of curved lines. I'm trying to alternate between curved and like curving in and curving out. Okay. Now we can go in here and kind of shade it all in with the yellow because the yellow is going to be the lightest one. We can color over yellow, which is nice. All right. Now again, these are just curves like this. Curve out, curve out, curve out. Just doing a lot of squiggly lines um, that we can fit together to make it almost look like it's like growing and stretching um, just like fire does. Okay. Nice. And if you look, I'm doing a lot of sketchy lines with the yellow because we're going to be able to color over this yellow and make it look a little bit more fire-like. Here we go. Now I'm picking like an orangish color um, and we're going to Start by shading in with the fire right here. We're not going to go all the way into the center, but we're just going to shade, shade it in right around. And we're going to almost trace the outlines of the fire as we go up. And as we go up, that's the dark we're going to go. So definitely up here, we'll make it dark. Like that. Right, fire does not have a shadow, um, but it is going to get darker at the top because it becomes less bright the farther we get from the source of the fire, of the flame. Okay. So as we get closer, we're going to almost shade like we would shade as if the light was coming right at the center. That's just because the, the light, the source of the fire is coming from the center. And we want to leave a little bit in the center of each of these flames just for where the, the yellow can be. There we go. 
All right, now we're gonna go to a little bit darker. It's gonna be like a little reddish orange right there. Okay, and we're gonna do an outline over the top outlines of everything like this. There we go. And we're going to just color in the tips of the flames like this right here. We're going to shade it and try to shade it so that it gradually turns into orange so that it's not just a hard change. Voila. And there we have a little fireball. Now, if you want to add in a little extra, uh, just like we did with the rock, where you had like little pieces falling, you could do that with the flame. And you can do like little flames coming off the top, like that. And these shapes are gonna be almost like, um, kind of like a squiggly line, but a little bit thicker in the middle. And these lines too, you can also, um, have like the little gradient of color where it gets a little bit more redder at the top like that and voila now if you also want to we can get rid of that sphere and so now we just have the fireball like that and there we go nice job all right i hope you guys were able to draw these we're going to take a break right now and we're going to go to um our Karate, there we go. Um, now, normally we would be doing uh, stretches and uh, jumping jacks and a front kick and a pare um, soon. I promise we're going to get back to doing the actual moves soon. But right now, let's just stick and stick, stay seated, and we're going to just stretch. So I want you guys to stretch. Stretch to the left. There we go. Stretch your back. Stretch to the right. Good. All right. Stretch your arm like this. Good. Stretch your arm like that. Good. Okay, do our hand stretch. So you grab your fingers like this, and twist them right to you. Good. Twist these arms like that. Oops. Hold on a second. Okay, we're going to keep on stretching. Okay. And we're going to stretch the other hand like this. Good. Stretch, 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 stretch. Okay, we're gonna shake our neck. Roll our neck all the way around. Roll our neck the other way around. Good. Tilt it from the left side to right side. Up and down. Good. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, we're going to switch to, um, now if you guys need to, now would be a good time to go grab some water. I have my water right here. Take a sip. Cheers. All right. Cool. Um, we're going to move on to our next part, which is optical illusions. And I know you guys are all excited for these. So. To first start off with optical illusions, I wanted to share with you guys an artist named M.C. Escher. And he drew a lot of these uh, pictures that you might have seen before. Uh, he drew things called mosaics and he drew things called tessellations. Um, how many of you in the comments, give me like a hand raised like that if you know what mosaics and tessellations are. Um, um, we can do, Sensei says, um, once I get a better backdrop so that I can uh, step back and I can do the moves with you. Um, I'm working on that. We're in the process. It was just the transition of me moving uh, places for where I can do my live stream. Now I'm in my apartment, um, so I don't have a whole lot of room. Um, but we will do it soon, hopefully by uh, next week, by Monday. Um, then we'll be get back to doing Sensei Says. So if you guys know what mosaics and tessellations are, though, raise your hand in the comments. Um, now, I'm going to explain right here a uh, mosaic, which you guys can see right here. This is, uh, this is a tessellation, actually, on the top. 
That's a tessellation. Now a tessellation is when you have the repeated image uh, just layered on top over and over and over again. So if you look up in this picture right up top, you can see that the horse and the man on the horse, there's only one image and it's the man on the horse and it's repeated over and over and over again and it fits perfectly into itself. So if you look, there's a yellow version of it and there's an orange version going uh, one way and a yellow version going the other way. All good if you guys join late. Um, you guys can catch up obviously once uh, as soon as this live video ends and then we uh, upload it onto the channel. You guys can catch up to everything we did. Right now, for those of you just joining though, we're doing optical illusions and I'm giving you guys a rundown on uh, MC Escher's optical illusions. All right, um, so let's see. We have our tessellations, and you can see on the right side, all the way, all the way over, over there, right over there, the farthest right one. Uh, that's a mosaic, and that's when you put different shaped pieces together and they fit together to make a whole piece. Um, now, this mosaic that he made is out of random kind of creatures and animals that he put together. Some of them aren't even real but he just wanted to fit them together. And you can see how there's even a guitar in there. There's like a elephant, there's a bird, a turtle, a lizard, a snail, um, and even some weird dragon looking creatures, um, just kind of messing around. And he's playing with the positive and negative space. Um, so yeah, so that's, we're gonna try to do a, um, a mosaic in just a bit, but also I wanted to show you some of his optical illusions that he did. Um, so on the left side, right up here, um, you guys can see he has a man holding a sphere. So he actually drew that hand holding the sphere, and that's supposed to be a self-portrait. So since he was a fan of doing optical illusions and uh, and he was an artist and he did most of these in pencil or graphite, um, he created this optical illusion where it looked like he was holding a sphere and it was reflecting back to him. And probably he was actually holding it when he was drawing it and like using it as reference. Um, but he was a master at drawing things very realistically. So you can see even the folds in the skin right there and everything. Um, he got down really well. Um, and on the far right side, it's an optical illusion because it looks like if you follow the trail of water, it looks like the water is going up, 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 zigzag up, and then it's falling down and it ends up right where it started. So in real life, water wouldn't be able to do that and travel up and then fall down again. Um, so that's the optical illusion. But um, going on <laughs> that's what's going on in your mind what the the uh, glass ball um, so we can try to draw one of these guys and let me see here we go um, in the comments below let me know which one looks most interesting because we only have 15 minutes left so I don't think we're gonna get to do all of these um, but let me know in the comments which one you think is most exciting and that you would like to draw. Um, and we're gonna switch screens to our um, to my drawing tablet. And so we can do, for starters, let's start off with an easy one. We'll do a mosaic. And so for the mosaic, I want you guys, while you guys are commenting which one, we, which optical illusion we wanna do, we can do the sphere, we can do the waterfall, um, or we can try to do a tessellation. The one before the glass ball, let me see. Um, Alright, so we have, we have either these tessellations on the left side where it's one piece and it's fit together or we can do a mosaic, which we're going to do first, we're going to do the mosaic first and then we also have um, the sphere and the glass ball, there we go. Okay. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure you guys can see my slides. Good. Okay, looks good. All right. You guys want to do a tessellation? Okay, let's start off just like we're going to start off nice and easy for ourselves, for our own sake. And let's create a mosaic and then we can, and I'll see what you guys say in the comments of what you want to do. So, here we go. For To do a test, uh, mosaic, all you have to do is start with 
that character. I'm um, still on the fire colors. There we go. Let's say we make a snail. All right. Now, what can we fit in inside of this? Let's see. If I turn this this way. Now, these definitely are not going to look like amazing works of art, but it is kind of fun to try to see how you can fit different shapes together. I see this almost as like an eagle beak, if you see what I'm saying. Let me make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And it's just kind of fun to play around and see what kind of shapes you can come up with. And you can, of course, make up animals. You can um, draw whatever you, um, you can draw objects too. They don't have to be all animals. Um, but it's just fun to see what kind of things you can come up with. It is definitely very hard if you look at it like that. Um, I try to look at it as like a fun challenge um, because it's not like, we're going to we're doing this for any other reason than just to have fun I'm trying to mess around with these characters. All right, let's see. Uh, I think this kind of reminds me of an elephant head. So I'm going to make an elephant like that. Okay, and what else can we make? Let's see. Okay. I'm looking in the comments, it's looking like the glass ball is the winner. So I think that's what we're gonna to try to do next. Okay, um, let's see. Um, any other things? Oh, here we go, we can make this. second. Try and draw this one from the side. There we go. It's supposed to be a bat creature. Um, there we go. Um, you guys can experiment, try to do different shapes, try to do different objects um, that fit in together, and just try to see if you can fill up the entire page with that. All right. Let us do the sphere. Okay. Um, if I didn't pick the one that you guys wanted, you could always leave it in the comments underneath this video, um, not in a live stream, because that's, um, that's hard for me to see, so there's a good chance that I might miss it. Um, but if you leave it in the comment underneath the video, uh, if you wanted to, for another day, we can do the waterfall challenge um, or like the waterfall fall optical illusion. Um, we can do that a different day. Uh, just leave it in the comments and, uh, and I'll check it out and I'll add it to the list. Um, for right now, let's do the sphere though. Okay. So you start with the circle. Now, um, MC Escher, I'm going to pull up his picture right here. Hold on a second. Now I'm gonna, there we go. We're gonna do the sphere that's one that's right up here. Um, now in the meantime, here we go. I'm gonna grab the picture. Okay, now for this picture, we're gonna, I'm gonna break down how to do the hand really quick. And I'm gonna break down and then we're gonna draw ourself and then I'm going to let you guys finish by shading your sphere to look like an actual um, 
um, sphere. Okay. All right. So we're going to break down the hand. We're going to draw it like a square. Like this. And this is going to be the hand, how he was holding it up. Like, I think, yeah, there we go. That looks about right. Yeah. There we go. And that's about all the fingers that you can see. So to do this hand, we're going to start filling in these fingers. And we're going to do fingers and uh, faces, uh, expressions and stuff a different day. Um, so don't worry about the hand too much right now. We can always add into it later. But for right now, this is going to be a general kind of crash course into drawing the hand. There we go. Okay. Now, for the sphere, we're going to shade it in just like how we did it with, um, let's see, our metal sphere. Remember? Um, so what we're going to do is, here we go. Before we do that shading though, on top of it, we're gonna draw um, our sketch for who it is. So if you want, you can draw your face right here. I'm gonna just draw a simple smiley face like that. Maybe I'll give him a beard, because it's gonna be me. There we go. Okay, um, now we're going to draw the rest of our body, which will look just blocking in like that. And we're going to have the arm stretch out like this. We're going to stretch the thumb like that. I'm going to try to line it all up to the fingers that are actually touching the sphere. Like that. Now the trick, again, to make it look more uh, detailed and more look, uh, and to make it look more realistic, is to uh, add in those details. Okay, you drew me. No, don't draw me. You got to draw you in the reflection. Or else it looks like I'm holding a ball in front of your face. Okay, here we go. Okay, you guys are funny. So we're going to draw the little creases in my fingers, uh, or your fingers. We're gonna have these stretch almost like a long ramp as if you're looking down like a, wide, a long road. Make sure I'm wearing my onesie and not a suit like MC Escher has. Um, and what'll help make this look even more is uh, you can use color, of course. And so color will definitely help make this look a little bit more like you. All right. Okay. Let me know how you guys are, how your spheres are looking in the comments. Now, the last part that all you'd have to do is just add in the shading, which I'm going to do really quickly, like this.
And you just want to kind of wrap your whole room, depending on what your room looks like. Um, And it helps to just start with a square in the in the far back, and that could be the far wall of your room. And if you have like a window there, put a window, like so. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys want a day where I'm just teaching you how to draw me. Um, all right, let's see. Am I my ceiling? I have a fan, so I can draw a fan like that. And what's cool about doing uh, doing it on a sphere? Um, is that you get to kind of stretch things and make them look kind of uh, wonky. Um, now, unless you actually had a sphere that you were holding, it would be kind of hard to imagine what that'll look like. So we're just gonna leave it at that for right now. You guys did a great job, I'm assuming, um, since it sounds like you guys are pretty quiet in the comments. So definitely send me those pictures. Uh, we're gonna switch uh, to right here. Here's the original. And uh, your challenge of the day is to draw a mosaic out of all the things that you love. So I remember at the beginning of class, um, we talked about all the things that you love, the things you like to hear and see and smell and taste. Um, I want you guys to try to draw a mosaic that fills up the entire page um, with those things that you love. So this is the mosaic right here. Um, and try to just fill it up with all the different things that you love. Cool. Um, now our morning mail comes from Bailey. Uh, Bailey, I don't know if you're on right now, but I hope you uh, see this. I know sometimes you don't comment, but you just uh, quietly watch and draw. Um, Bailey is one of my star students, um, and she is in a bunch of my other classes, and has uh, I've been teaching her for a long time. And uh, she said for ours for last class that she loves Totoro. He is uh, her favorite character of all time. And uh, this is from episode seven of our show. And Bailey really crushed it. She did all these cool drawings. She did Calvin and Hobbes. She did uh, a tiger. She did Totoro. And she did the unicorn too. Um, and uh, she really did an awesome job. And Bailey is in my other digital drawing class. And, um, and she's crushing it in that class too. And so I'm really excited to see the cool things that she's, she does next. Um, and I hope, um, yeah, uh, Con uh, congratulations and good job, Bailey. Very nice job. Um, okay. Now, here's a close-up of the drawings that she did. Um, you see the unicorn, Calvin and Hobbes, Tiger, and Totoro, too. Uh, very nice job. Okay. Now, let me know what I should draw next and comment below. So, uh, commenting in the live chat, um, that's fun for me to just see while um, I'm Doing this live and if I'm asking questions during the live stream that's that's where you should be commenting but for you guys to suggest what we should draw next or if it's like a character cartoon character because we are going to do another one of those cartoon characters uh, comment in the chat in the in the comments below underneath the video and then that I will for sure see and I can even reply back to you um, to those comments too all right um, Submit your drawings. So if you have drawings from this week that you want to share with me, submit them to noahfontana at gmail.com and you can be featured on next episode, which is going to be tomorrow. Um, as well, if you want to support, uh, simply just follow the link uh, in the description and there's a donation channel. Um, and that just helps me uh, do better stuff. Like I'm investing in a green screen and so that way we can do some more karate. Um, so that's what that money is going to go towards, uh, if you feel so inclined to, um, donate anything. Um, even if it's only a couple of dollars, I'll take it. Um, and, uh, don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe, uh, to the CTN channel. Uh, that way it's just going to help you guys so that you guys can see, uh, you'll get notified if you click the bell in the corner, you'll get notified of when the next live stream is. So if you forget, um, in a few weeks, um, yeah, um, and that way, even if you, even if you take a break or something like that, or you're gone for a few weeks or something like that, you can always, um, tune in. 
and you won't forget to like check up on all the videos and stuff. It'll be right there on your page. Um, that's all for today. Um, I'm going to say a big thank you to everybody for participating. Um, I had a lot of fun. This is always something that I look forward to in the mornings. And, um, and I'm super grateful for everybody that joined in. Um, if you have any comments or questions, just send me an email or comment below. And don't forget to follow us. You can see all of our things at the bottom of the screen. Um, and uh, right there, you can see at Teacher Noah on Instagram, at CTN Burbank and hashtag CTN Mornings if you want to post it on anything. Um, I'm going to sign off for now, but I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, Friday morning, where we're going to learn how to do watercoloring, and a, uh, we're going to learn how to watercolor a masterpiece, so make sure you get your watercolors out. Um, and if you don't have watercolors, you can still use some other paints or pencils um, to do some of the things that we're doing, but watercolors would be optimal. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.